Welcome back to Gladiator Diaries. Before we dive into this episode, make sure to subscribe, drop us a follow, all of that good stuff, because if you've been following our Instagram page, you would know already that for this episode, we are joined by Mr. Will Curry, uh, who ever since we've been talking about doing this, it was like, well, we've got to get Will on at some point, and uh, I'm sure we'll have plenty of conversations over the course of doing this podcast, but how are you guys both doing? Doing very well. We just finished... Uh... Very hard uh, jiu-jitsu and wrestling rounds. We've got a nice little system that we do on Wednesdays and Thursdays fully in place. And uh, yeah, as always, sweat completely covering the whole of the gym floor downstairs. But it's a good system we have. So yeah, man, firing on all cylinders, I can say. I am yeah. interested to get into... Uh, I've heard from from both uh your perspective and and your dad's perspective about uh about will you joining the the team and and that whole process and things like that uh, I'd, I'd love to get your kind of story of how this came together and, and what that's been like over the last couple of years of, of of training with those guys and kind of learning the way that they do things compared to what you'd experienced in the past yeah, I first met Modestus at Hodger Gracie uh, Jiu Jitsu, Roger Gracie Jiu Jitsu, and uh, did some Jiu Jitsu rounds with him. And then obviously, you know, you get the Instagram, you, you start networking with each other. And then uh, we, we met up, did a few training sessions in my flat back in the day during COVID. I kitted out a room in order to train, and he would come down and help me train. And then from there, the relationship progressed to where. I eventually, uh, after the Roundtree fight when he hurt his knee, came and visited him. So it's, uh, saw him up in uh, where, where where we are right, right now. We're, right? we're like pretty much in Watford and like in the sticks. sticks and yeah, exactly. We're still yeah. in London. It's quite a good location because still by the train stations to get into London. Right. So, but yeah, it's uh... but yeah, because they came up here, started uh, talking to him when he had his injury, and then we started training after he got better. And yeah, one thing led to another. We're now. Uh, Got a good system going on. We've been doing it for a while now. How has it been adapting to a, a kind of their way of training? Because this is something when we had Gintas on on the last episode, this is something we spoke about a lot, you know, kind of the uniqueness of some of the training uh, and how you've adapted to that. Like, what has that process been like? Because it's interesting to get your perspective on it as a guy that has had to learn that, like, once you've already been doing MMA for some time. Yeah, I can definitely see where Modestus gets his power, that Baltic power from, you know. His dad is a, a very, very good strength and conditioning trainer alongside a martial art coach. So he encompasses all aspects of what fighting really entails. Um, his dad is a very, very old school, but also a very good coach. Like he understands his fighters. And uh yeah, I mean, it's hard training with this guy. He's very fucking good. He's a very powerful guy. I think in the UK, we're looking at one of the the top guys. Um, and yeah, it's 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 been uh, it's densified my bones, densified my body. It's made me a stronger middleweight. So uh, it it yeah. is it is made made men tear up. Both me and Will, pretty much. <laughs> we're the ones that we're, we're the ones that are in it where it's literally blood, sweat, and tears. Just did eight rounds. We just did forty minutes, five minutes with a one minute rest, nonstop for uh, yeah, like forty minutes. We did resting in, in there as well, so it was hard. And we did like three rounds of MMA yesterday, three rounds of grappling yesterday, alongside loads of drilling. And then before that, we just we're just we're just in some crash course MMA mode right now. You know, we're just yeah, nonstop Will, working. Will's experienced all the. Uh, all the Soviet uh, kettlebell training and and all these other stuff that like dad does because dad's very intricate with what you know he uses like a mix of the old school mixed with like some stuff which is like very specifically catered like obviously for MMA so um, much so many different things he does with us yeah and it's uh, it's I guess you could say for the most part unconventional um, but at the end of the day I think this is stuff that he was doing back when he was younger so. It's good that he's able to pass it on to us. And uh, I think like, you know, anytime you're around anywhere in the gym, whatever, you can just find and do some of these exercises, you know, and it will just like open up your overall sort of athleticism, I guess. It's interesting to get that perspective because like if, if I was trying to guess what like you, how you would have reacted to that, 
the, the talk, uh, and we mentioned this on the last episode of Gintas, the talk ar- around you, Will, when, when you first came through in Cage Warriors was like, the, the guy is a crazy athlete. Like, if everything works out for him technique-wise, there's no way he isn't going to go to the top. And so hearing you be like, I'm so much tougher now going through these drills and stuff, I think like that, oh, that puts it into perspective. He, shit, he, shit, he shits on my athleticism. So this is this is the thing, you know. You're just being too nice. No, no, this is the <laughs> truth. My, man, my man's a light heavyweight and he can do a backflip. You know, this is a this is a real We're getting will on those back foot soon. Uh, you know, know. <laughs> we've got to get over his fear of going backwards. I don't know. My grip, my grips are getting good. Having to, you know, try and uh, deal with Modestus, but at the end of the day, you know, he is a very, very good athlete. And his dad, I think, you know, you can thank a lot to his dad because all these drills, the coordination, you know, from from juggling to, you know jumping sprinting changing direction quickly all, all sorts all i've, sorts. I've definitely so noticed so many. i've definitely noticed i'm not just saying it just because obviously my dad's the 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 trainer but will's actual athleticism has gone up it's made him a bit more loose when he strikes yeah way more um way more. and all that stuff like even just like the speed his like explosion is a little bit different so you know th- these are all things that you know so in other words if you thought i was a good athlete back then it's only going to be a new level now that I've been training with Mo and his dad. Yeah, I remember that bit. Like that for ages was such a big thing in in each one of your Cage Warriors fights. Was like, like eventually he's going to get there because that was always the talk. Was like how how athletic you were. Like I remember I'd been watching Christian Leroy Duncan for a long time because he was he's from the same town as me, and I watched him through the amateurs and stuff. And so you guys fighting each other, it was like you're both just freak athletes, like crazy, uh, which, you know, you see those guys come through Cage Warriors, but not all the time, where you're just like, Jesus, if, if this guy, if this, if it clicks, like, that'll be it. So, I, I'm curious, what, like, what specifically do you feel like, athletically, you've improved on so much since being with them? Well, with Duncan, he, he did something I didn't do back then, which was switching stances, which is, you know, very, very good for coordination. So, you know, he's, he's, he's constantly giving himself different looks and you different looks. So it, it puzzles you and it's always making them a step ahead. So that switching stances, I believe, has a lot to do with coordination. And then at the same time, um, you know, fast twitch, very, very quick, very, very explosive. That that was lacking for me back then. I wasn't as fast twitch as I am now. Um, but overall, I believe it's that it's that looseness, coordination, and just overall fast twitch. That's what Duncan had and has. And uh, in order to improve in that aspect, I, I remember him having a skipping rope over his shoulder before we fought. I remember looking at that, thinking, "I don't skip." And you can see it in the footwork. And that's what it really is. The big differences in my style now is I switched stance, got a lot more looser with my footwork and uh, training with him has obviously just leveled me up a lot. So, yeah, he's a great fighter. He's uh, in the UFC now. You know, had a very tough opponent in Petrosian. Uh, you know, that's a very good fight. Very, very good fighter. Over 75 kickboxing bouts. Um, but, yeah, he did pretty good in that fight. He just, you know... He needs to just keep fighting, keep learning the trade and come again. But ultimately, he's going to do well. And uh, he's a really good fighter. So good experience to get that in cage warriors. Will will definitely be uh, following suit uh, to the UFC as well. Next next couple, for, like very, very shortly. I do believe that. And I do believe he is ready for that level. So we're just waiting. Yeah, how has that been uh, getting fights at, at middleweight? Like, I mean, I, I remember it, it was a bit crazy, the the whole fights with you and Christian Leroy Duncan because people were so high on both of you. But I think it ended up being an incredible advert for Cage Warriors as like, you know, like they're not afraid to put two really touted prospects up against each other. And you've both, you know, uh, I'm sure learned a ton from those fights against each other. But yeah, I imagine... I imagine after that, it was tough to get fights when they see how competitive you guys were uh, and how highly thought of you were. As well, like, it was conditioning okay. that was the issue, especially, you know, again, in the second... OK, the first one, we can we can go into that all day long with, with what happened with the knee finish. Um, I personally believe I was OK to continue, and I believe it was an early stoppage. Regardless, we had the second fight. I was I was doing well in the first round, 
it's it's almost like the conditioning wasn't good enough back then. I couldn't keep up what I was trying to do. My pressure on top, trying to keep my weight on him. His get-ups were very, very good. Um, I could have done better with a bit of pressure with what, what I was doing, but he did well. But ultimately, it's like since training with Modestus, it's that strength, I believe, which I think a lot of grappling can sometimes come down to, that overall manpower. I was 22 at the time. And yeah, I think a lot of middleweights have seen that fight, seen him, seen how he dealt with certain other fighters. And they think they, you know, I don't really want to fight that guy. That guy, he gave that guy a problem. That guy's very, very good in the UFC now. So yeah, it's a struggle for me at the moment to get a match up. Yeah, it's mad because like literally they had to go and find a guy, you know, from Brazil who's fought in KSW and other big promotions to 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 fight Will because there was just no one in the UK that was going to step up and and do that. Do you know what I mean? So I think uh, if that's not uh, an, an, an evident key as to why this man is UFC ready when no one wants to, do you know what I mean? No, no one wants to fight him at this stage. Um, I think it's very similar to what I actually had to go through as well. There, there was a time when they had to search far and wide to find an opponent because as we know, most of the guys that are in cage wars at the minute, it's more of the smaller weight classes and obviously it's been... Middleweight has been a bit more stacked, but like, for example, like light heavy, they're going to have to find guys from all over Europe and stuff like this. That's what I think is going to have to happen in order for Will to get a fight probably uh, in cage warriors. But uh, as I say, I think improving on the skill sets, trying to get as, uh, as good in each area as possible just makes it worse for his opponents anyways down the line. Yeah, I mean, you said what I was going to say about how it, it reflects your time when you're at the top of the division and them having to fly guys in. And they still seem to have that problem. I know that they've got, uh, they, they don't have a light heavyweight champion at the moment, but it, it looks like they might end up with one with, with Matty Byfield from Birmingham. Yeah. But again, they're going to have to find him opponents because there isn't really anyone else. It's interesting with the middleweight division because usually it's like a revolving door. But at the moment you've got, obviously Mick uh, as the champion and then you had him fight James Webb you've got Darren Stewart in the mix Matt Bonner's always in and around that mix like those guys have stayed there for quite a while like when you look at it Will as kind of the guy that everyone expects to kind of break through that group like in the near future what's your take on it because like I said these guys usually come and go but you've got a few guys in there now that are like at the top and they've been around the top for quite a while now yeah, I mean, so which which names are we we we, we talking about in particular? Um, I, I suppose Mick Stanton is, is the, the 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 most interesting one to get your take on having having faced him for the belt, but also you've got Darren Stewart, who I would imagine is, is probably next. Um, having you know, Stanton when's that fight going to get well. announced? When when's that fight going to get announced between Stewart and Mick? I have no idea. I just assume that it's next. Weird, after that hasn't been announced yet. But uh, I assumed that was going to be the next one as well. Um, I was told by the matchmaker that I needed to win two more after the Mick Stanton fight in order to get that fight back again. Um, Mick Stanton, you know, he, he beat James Webb in the last fight. So, you know, Matt Bonner, he's always fighting somebody. He's matched up, I believe. I don't believe... You know, any of these guys, they're fighting anything to the caliber that I've been fighting at. Like, the last guy I had to fight was some 8-2 and two Brazilian from the favela, black belt and jiu-jitsu. I, I look at the records of the guys, you know, Bonner's matched up with or whoever, for that case, in the division. And they're not going, they're not fighting the level I'm fighting. But I've sparred these guys. You know, I've trained with them. Mick Stanton is the one who obviously I've not I've got the loss to. I you know it's it's one of them fights where it was very close regardless. I, I definitely think it should happen again. Uh, I can't get a fight, so you know it has, I to, it has, it has to be me and him then, hasn't it? If I, I can't get a fight, it has to be me and him. I generally think, you know, after obviously having lost to to Mick, to have the first fight back against that guy, like a, a guy that they had to fly out from somewhere else high level, fought on top promotions, and he beat him really with ease, Will. Like, you know, let, let, let's be honest, he did an amazing job with his anti-grappling and then 
got on top and you know started landing heavy shot and even his striking looked more fluid you know how was that not earn another title shot that is what i'm thinking because yeah you could say oh maybe have one more fight but have any of the other guys in the division fought a guy of that caliber i don't think so you know what i mean or you know maybe close to it but or the, or on par at least so if he's just beating a guy that's of that level i think he should get the title shot again um but you know like like i say maybe i'm a little bit biased but i i, I know that um i know that he would do definitely uh, a hell of a much better job next time around yeah, I mean, we don't have a, a main event for the London card back at the O2 Indigo, so I would imagine maybe that is Stanton's next title defense. It seems like that would kind of match up time-wise with, with Darren Stewart and his fight, so we'll see if something gets there's announced there's on that. Newcastle and there's um, London, which haven't been announced, so... Mm. You know. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. However, to, to go back to, to the point you just made, Moddy, uh, and this is something I, I knew we were going to get into at some point, and that is, that is Will the Talker. Because I think that they could have done the rematch with you and Stanton after your last win, because the promo that you cut after <laughs> the win in London is something I will never forget. Uh, I, I can't remember the Best wording specifically of... of calling out Stanton, calling out Webb, calling out all these guys before they'd even fought. And uh, I feel like with that clip alone, they definitely could have done you and Stanton again. Or you and Webb had Webb won the title on that night. It feels like it sold itself, but you know. Man was, plan, spit, man was spitting bars that night. I swear to God. I don't know where it came from. I was sitting there in the interview room just, like, <laughs> just laughing the whole time because this guy was on he was on an absolute madness. <laughs> and when Will gets going, he just keeps going, man. I love it. <laughs> I mean, I, it was the first time I'd seen it. And like, obviously, we had been speaking about doing this podcast like just like a couple of weeks before, maybe. And you said about, oh, we'll have, to, we'll have to get Will on because when he goes, he just goes. And I was like, I, I don't know if I've, I, I haven't seen that. So uh, I'm excited to see it. And then yeah, he's a very it, tactical as well, methodical thinker as well. You know what I mean? He, he, he obviously chooses what he says wisely. And then when, when he gets off on a subject, that, that's it. <laughs> where does, Wait, where does this come from? That's, that's what I want to know because I, I've seen interviews with you so many times where, you weren't like that. Is it like the just the, the like being around the fight, having just fought the yeah, adrenaline? I think it was just that I just having the fight. I think yeah, that that you've got that kind of like energy after you've just had that fight. You've done what you believe in your mind. You can feel it when you've done a good performance. You know when you've performed well. You can you just know you've been in the game long enough to know when you've done something well or not. And I, I knew in that moment I had performed quite well. So that always makes you feel feel yourself a little bit. The mojo juices start flowing, and uh, the yeah, adrenaline in, 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 was that, in that in that moment you feel kind of unbeatable when you have that kind of feeling going through your body. And yeah, I was just acting on how I felt in the moment, you know. I think you put 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 it this way: it just brought out the passion and will. Yeah, you know I mean, mm. you might you, you might not see it outside of it, but as soon as you're in a situation like that where everyone's like, do you know what I mean? You just come off of a massive win. Uh, yeah, Will's Will's always in. But I think I think everyone everyone as a fighter probably feels that same level of euphoria. Um, just you know, they don't they don't really speak the tale. But <laughs> I also had like, things to say. You know, there were, obviously you could tell from the video there were there were things on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. It seemed like there was a lot that you needed to to get off your chest in that moment about. That's why I asked you about the you know those guys in the division that have been at the top for for some time because it it felt like that was you laying down the marker of like I'm not here to make up the numbers with the rest of the division. Like you guys are just in the way. That's what it yeah. felt like. It was like a moment of like I'm not hanging around. You know. I want to be in the UFC with him, man. I want to be on a, a UFC London card with him. That would be sick. <laughs> that would be what we want to do. We have like gigs talking the hardest, and then on the other side, I was like, oh, you've got some, some mad Viking like <laughs> shit coming out. <laughs> like Viking chants, like mixed with like trap. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Just like all sorts. <laughs> Mix it all up, man. 
That's some if, crazy uh, things we were listening to coming back from training yesterday, man. Mate, we listened to like Russian rap. Madness. Like, apparently, my dad was translating it, and it was just like, oh, mad, "Only like, samurais go to heaven." Only samurais go to heaven, and like just mad swearing. He <laughs> said, "My dad's like bloody hell, they swear a lot, don't they?" <laughs> Mate, oh, we, we've even been li- listening to like medieval bard music. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm music, all about right? it. It's like stuff out of video games, you know, when you go into like... Give, the... that, give that video game RPG feeling, you know. <laughs> I'm all about it. I, I'm, I'm... Potions and, and, and magic and shit. And dragons. Yeah. And, yeah. I'm into it. I, I I think that would be an incredible walkout song choice. Although I think everyone, <laughs> everyone in the O2 would just be baffled the whole time. <laughs> but it would be such a good introduction. <laughs> That, that would fantastic. definitely be a, a, a great introduction to uh, to the UFC, especially to the UK fans. Bloody hell! <laughs> oh, I think we, I could we could think of some amazing entrances actually. Mate, he's come out to some good ones. We've had Metalingus, we've had um, what's Beowulf. it, Blade, Boat, uh, yeah, Blade, Beowulf, yeah, 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 Beowulf. Yeah. yeah, he's he's had a lot of a lot of ones. Every, every... He just is the conventional every single one the same thing. Yeah. But I respect that as well. It's it's mad that we're. Like, you know, it, sometimes I do feel like, oh, maybe I should change it and whatever, but I don't know. I don't know. You used what... to have that one back in the day that was like, and then they win the champion. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah I, I changed that one up a little bit, yeah, 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 for that one. But yeah. And then it switched into talking the hardest, whereas you had a different one. Yeah. yeah different yeah. entrance. Now, now we've got about. Gladiator to talking yeah, the hardest. That's so. hard. I like that. I like his new one. But you see, like I say, we're both unique. We have our things that. You know, we we like to... It was cool, though. You're in the apex, right? And I'm behind him, and I can see the camera in front of him, and he's, like, getting told by the lady to walk or whatever. And you can just hear the gladiator music, and, and you're in the apex, and you're just walking, and it's just... It feels like a video game. It was mad. Yeah. Yeah, I love all that stuff. Like, we spoke about, I think, on one of the first episodes. Um, I can't remember why it came up to be honest, but we spoke about the idea of if you guys were ever a tag team, and immediately <laughs> Bobby, you were like, baby. you were like, I'll, I'll let Will, I'll let Will do the talking, and and, and I'll stick to doing stuff in the it, ring. That's he's fine. the muscle, and I'm the mouth, <laughs> and together we'll take over WWE as well as the UFC. What are they talking about? The, 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 the Paul brothers, do you know what I mean? Tag team championships, mate. We're coming for them. Hardy boys ain't got nothing on us. We'll show I them the table ladders and chairs. You've match. already got the like the the ideas for, for the entrances, for the for everything going on. You've already got the whole warrior thing going on. Like feels like it's already being built, you know. The Phoenix and the Dragon. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You put those two together, mate. Fucking unstoppable. Yeah, Sounds I can only good. imagine the sort of like I want to like get some art in my house in the future, which has got like a dragon sort of thing. Oh wall, man, like that'd a be phoenix. So sick. Yeah, yeah, it might be so cool as like a background. Yeah, for sure. You should we need to get tapestry, get... just like la- large tapestry to go in our but in in our houses. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like some, just something really like like I feel like the more over the top you go with it the better it is. Yeah. Like, just go all in. <laughs> it's like style, isn't it? Well, actually, I don't know. I don't know. Some, some things maybe, <laughs> may, may, maybe don't look that great. But yeah, I mean, you know, you've got to have your own style. You've got to be, you know, unique. Like, flair. Show a bit of flair. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Flair, but that doesn't mean paint your nails and have pearl necklaces. Well, I, 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 I wouldn't go that far. No. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I was going to mention the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Izzy walkout where he danced. Do you, were you guys a fan of that? Where he did the the choreographed routine? I think it was pretty cool. I mean, yeah. it was like mad, like was sick, that confident, was sick. like mad confident. But obviously, he believed in himself. And fair play, that's what you need. You need that flair. Do you know what I mean? Um, obviously, it had that effect because he he managed, you know, he managed to cool. get the amazing executed it well, not knockout. So everything just obviously worked all hand in hand. I think that confidence made him fire better actually in, yeah. in in the fight as well yeah and yeah. to act him with boldness exactly 48 yeah. laws of power if you don't know about that one no i don't i have no idea but uh mate it's i'll have to look into it oh you know what that'll be something interesting for you to do you know when this is done you're just chilling in your room whatever just go on youtube and search up 48 laws of power 
and that's like there's an animation. It's actually quite good, <laughs> quite nice. Okay. There, there, there's your homework, Carl. <laughs> Till next I'm, week, <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you the report on it next week. He's gonna, he's gonna read that and watch it, and he's gonna take over this whole this whole business. <laughs> you know, we're gonna have the best podcast around. Mate. <laughs> gonna be beating everyone. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get somebody new in to host, so that it can be me and Moddy talking about fights, and I'll have someone else setting the questions up for both of us. I'll already, I'll have calculated it all already. Um. We That's spoke the then about the... there. There's some posters have you got in the back? Who, who oh. have we got? We got Ho and Chevchenko. Who else have we got? We got there's a lot of Chevchenko going on. You a big Chevchenko fan? No, I bought um the UFC store, like the online store do a thing where you can buy a random poster and they send you a signed event poster, like completely random. It can be a pay-per-view, it can be a fight night from like twenty well, not 20 years ago but you know 15 years ago something like that so i bought a couple of those so i got that fight night of home and shevchenko and then that fight night of glover and rashad evans and they got you know it's the cool, ones that you really? sign on fight week they're pretty they're, they're pretty cool i mean they're expensive but they're pretty cool yeah um, this is what yeah. i'm saying you got you got something in the walls it gives you a bit of like you know the core in the room this is what i want now you know what i mean dragon in the phoenix you know things on the wall with UFC posters and like gloves on the wall. This is what I've got in my mind. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. Um, but well, you spoke. Up. Absolutely. <laughs> I, uh, Moddy, what happened to the, to the, to the setup plan? Have we got an update on that? This is like what? behind the scenes nonsense that people probably don't care about, but you mentioned about get like properly setting something up. Setting something up. Sorry. For like for your background, like kind of what Will was saying about them. Yeah, look at his background. Oh, yeah, look, 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 look at his back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, yeah, this yeah. is look this is just background. the room that I work in. You know in. what? Really like I said, I've been impressive. I've been speaking about it for a while, but it's like the neon lights um to put in the back to actually do it in my room and like you know have everything put out. Like probably put one of my like the fight posters or something because it's mad. Do you know what? Uh, out of, you know they usually give you a load of fight posters from the UFC. They give you one where it's all of the people signed, and then one where it's just you signed it. So I gave I gave one to my clients. I just see that's the only poster that I've actually taken out of those tubes that they give you. Like I should actually like do you know what I mean? Like make use of it. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so yeah, it's really just giving me a bit of a kick up the ass just to try and make this look a bit more flashier or a little bit more professional instead of just sitting in my in my living room at home. <laughs> but you recognize it. That's the main thing. Yeah. Uh, I'll get on your level, mate. I will get on your level. I, I, as I said, I've said it many times, this is just the room that I work in. It's really not that impressive. Um <laughs> But the the UFC posters do help. It makes it look a little bit a little bit more legit than just yeah, you know, a, little bit more a fine, room full of yeah. full of stuff. Do you get to keep the ones that everyone signs, or do you only yeah. get the ones that you sign? Yeah, yeah, I can't believe he doesn't put like one of the ones that signed by everyone. Because like, you probably you'll probably end up seeing some like cool names on there. Because when I got those, yeah, no, you get that... desensitized to it when you're doing it. He just have, focuses have, on I, training. I, 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 he literally is like a robot. Yeah. He just trains, <laughs> eats. Sleep, trains is like, oh, have I eaten enough calories? He's like recording his calories. He's like <laughs> he's looking at me as if I'm <laughs> some, some some weirdo. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> who the fuck does all that shit. For a professional athlete that is what he is, and I'll, I'll give him credit. You know, when I, when I met him and started training with him and his dad, they really made me understand what real athlete family is. Like this is an athlete. Family. I guess you could just say we're just very meticulous with everything. Yes, that they we are. It's a proper meticulous. <laughs> Yeah, setup going on over here. But soon it will be a very meticulous setup going on in my room for the background of this podcast. But <laughs> until that gets sorted out, <laughs> we have to we have lots to make of spinning do. plates. Lots of spinning plates. <laughs> the process. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I'd be curious to see what ones you've got on there that you've been able to keep. Like, did you get one for the fight in Australia? Because that's probably. A yeah. pretty valuable one. Yeah, yeah, Vol Volkanovski, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's just in the back. <laughs> it's just in a cardboard tube. It's not room. in the attic, it's in my... It's, spiders' it's, webs. It's, it's, it. Yeah, it probably is in my room with spiders' webs in it, to uh, be honest with you. 
Like literally, crazy. And like I just, you know, you get all the posts, and then I just never, I just never think to take it out. Actually. I remember when I was like starting off MMA. I remember just watching every YouTube video and the UFC YouTube channel, just everything, every every video. I wouldn't miss a thing. I wouldn't miss a fight. And as you change, as you do this thing, you know, you only really watch certain fighters, or you know, you don't just watch everything like you did. It's different, a different mindset. But yeah, yeah, it's just process. <laughs> Yeah, like when I when I got those, I had to go back and look at who was actually on the card because you can't tell from the signatures. Like some of them, I know that you have to probably sign a ton of them, so I get it, but yeah. some of them are impossible. But like, you know, I remember watching that card where Holly Holm beat, uh, where Shevchenko beat Holly Holm. It was a pretty underwhelming event, but it has like Habib's signature and like Usman. Yeah. And it's like... Mad. You know, you get you get the value out of it, yeah, because 100%. of that. And also, they sent me two by accident, so I ended up getting real lucky. So, yeah. <laughs> me, meanwhile, that, you've, you've got a bunch. You'll take the major <laughs> accent on that one, Bloody hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't too bad. Um, to talk about the UFC uh, a little bit more, you mentioned briefly about the idea of you both fighting in London on the same card, which would be fantastic. Uh, the thing that I, I would really look forward to is the commentators losing their minds when they put together that the guy debuting is the guy that everyone was going crazy about as the loudest corner man of all time in the <laughs> UFC, <laughs> which uh, it is still is still hilarious. Like, uh, I, I don't know. You've probably been asked about it a bunch of times, but what was your reaction to that? And people, people were just like, "Who is this guy? And why? Why is he so loud?" Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was just in the moment at the time. I was, you know, Australia. I remember everyone cheering for Tyson when he came out. You know, it was pretty busy crowd at that point. I think it was pretty much full. And when he was fighting, you know, I think I actually shut up the Australian crowd, just just myself. I swear. To, I swear <laughs> he was I remember, the loudest one in that arena, I swear I to God. Just literally only being able to hear my voice in the whole arena. And I remember thinking to myself, they're actually being quiet to just listen to me now because they're finding it funny. <laughs> but it, it, it was just one of those ones where I was in the moment and I was just, we've just come on a 21-hour flight from England to Australia, we are not losing this fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he was we, putting all his energy and heart and fight. soul we, to scream his structure out. It me. was just, we needed this. You know what I mean? It was like survival. The so, passion. The passion came, came through out, again in that you know, moment. <laughs> it's just in the moment. And uh, yeah, I, I genuinely believe, you know, he was fighting a really good fighter that night and I was just on edge because Tyson Pedro is no joke. It's a really good name on the Nessus' record to beating that guy and in the moment you know I, I just wanted him to win so i was just in that element of just i guess you could call it cheerleader or hype man or, or whatever you want to call it but at the end of the day it helps you know it helps it helps to have backup dancers i guess you could say but I, I, ultimately I, i'm just there you know just making noise you know but also at the same time seeing things that i truly believe that maybe could help the fight as well and, get a cough kick this motherfucker you know i, I want to get in tyson's head as well i don't want him thinking in his mind what to do i just want him listening to my voice so and you know what i don't think we'll even i don't think any of us even realize how loud he actually was until we heard like the commentating and people like like sending him messages <laughs> and so like, sending him like loads of hate as well because my obviously their boy lost <laughs> yeah, I was getting death threats after. <laughs> People were not happy. Oh, I don't want to encourage the uh, the the death threats and stuff. But it, is there a chance that we get a similar performance in Brazil? Because unfortunately, unfortunately I'm, I've been scheduled to fight October fourteenth in Dublin. Cage oh, promised yeah. me a fight in October fourteenth in Dublin, and the pro the problem is is I haven't got an opponent right now. So I'm waiting for an opponent and I don't know whether or not I'm going to get an opponent. And if they don't get me an opponent, then I will fight on the next show, which is November 11th. Which would London, make it not feasible for which, him to come. Which would mean that going to Brazil and then going back and fighting, it would just not be smart to do all that flying and traveling. And, and, and also on fight week, it's different preparation. It's, it's training for him with his weight cut around it. Whereas I'm, I'm trying to get ready and peak my fitness, for example. So obviously, I want to fight Dublin, and if I was to fight in Dublin, have a match up, and have someone signed, I would be able to go to Brazil. But unfortunately, because I just don't know whether or not I'm going to be on Dublin or not, 
and it, it's looking like probably not because it's getting to the stage where what is it like a couple of weeks away and I've still got, not got an opponent. It's looking like it's going to have to be November 11th, which means I wouldn't have been able to have cornered him. But I know I'll be there in spirit. And, uh, you know, he's... his voice will definitely still be heard. I'll watch Trust it me. live. I'll watch it live. <laughs> I, I feel like we should get a, uh, a Will Curry reaction cam set up to see whether <laughs> you shout that loud at the TV. Because, yeah, he's well, there you go. There you go, bro. Instagram Live done. Everyone, go check it out November 4th. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fantastic. Um, we mentioned this like real briefly uh, on the last episode. I don't know whether it was after we finished recording, but um, I, I assume the reason you're fighting in or well, supposed to be fighting in Dublin instead of London is just it's closer and. You know that that's the benefit. I wanted to you fight on the Manchester same. card a couple of days from now, um, but apparently it was full. So I said, you know, the next one, next one was Dublin. So yeah, you're right. That's the only reason. <laughs> Do you feel is there like any particular attachment in fighting in different places? Like, have you fought in Dublin before? No, I've never fought in Dublin before. But it is pretty cool to fight in the capital city of Ireland. That's that's something I would like to do. I don't, I don't think, I, I do like fighting in certain locations, but I also think as well, like looking at Mo, he's gone to fight in Australia against Australia and he's gone to fight against an American in America. Now he's fighting a Brazilian in Brazil. It's like, he's always traveling. I'd like to see him fight domestic. So it's one of those situations where, although, yeah, I, I think it's cool. I think after he wins in Brazil, he needs to get something in Europe or someone fighting him in UFC London. Like the last UFC London card was dead. It was missing someone like him and me. So that's what I think. We have spoken about this, I think nearly on every episode about how much like after this win three in a row, it's got to be London. There's no ifs or buts about it. It has to be. Three and different it, backyards. Someone needs to fight him in his backyard. And he will say that on the post fight interview. So, it's all planned, mate. It's all written in the stars. It felt like, I mean, the last London card, you had Cage Warriors the night before as well. So, like, I mean, I know that London is is obviously the easiest fight for you to make anyway because you're so close to it. But literally being there the day before, I don't remember how long the, the Zach fight was around them, but obviously it wouldn't have been possible to fight in london on on that time around but like that must be frustrating when you're literally like in the o2 the day before the ufc is you know <laughs> yeah fighting yeah obviously for 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 will but look at the end of the day will, will's on a different uh he's on a different path right now you know what i mean so i guess yeah as much as like oh damn it would be, it'd be great you know fighting fighting the ufc is not it, there so. yet so until i am there then uh, you know we can start doing those things but yeah it's just one of those those things where i've lost the fights that would have enabled me to be in the ufc already and in order to get there i need to win my fights and that's what i need to do and the last fight i want to make more more fights like that i want to create a domino effect of those kind of performances where i just shut people out and that will that will reinvent myself. Do you think the, the the path to the UFC for you will be obviously you have to you have to win the next fight to get the to get the title fight? Do you do you imagine that will still be that will be the Stanton rematch, or do you think anyone beats him before then? I don't think anyone beats Stanton right now. <laughs> the guy is very good, even though he's old. He is aging, to be fair, fast, but. As far as I'm concerned, still, if he is able to perform and you know just do what he's doing, he's got good grappling, good wrestling. He's got a big head. He's got a good punch. He's someone who you know is a well-rounded guy. He's got a bit of tenacity about him. He's got really good cardio. So ultimately, you know, he's strong. He's someone who'll be around and he'll be. Who, who's going to beat him? I mean, who? So we go through the division. Who? Who is there? Who? 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 Who will take him out? I mean, well, I imagine, I imagine it'll only be him and Darren Stewart, and then he fought Darren Stewart assuming... already as well. Don't forget, like they've already fought, so you know it's not like he hasn't beaten Darren. And uh, I'm sure you know Darren can can give a good fight, but I just think his wrestling is better than Darren's. 
and therefore, you know, how's Darren going to stop the takedown? And you, did you see the first fight between him and Darren? So I just, you know, unless there's a massive change, which I don't know, which I'm not aware of, I don't see how that fight's any different. And as for who else is there in the division that can beat Stanton or, or attempt to beat Stanton? He's fought, so he's fought James Webb, beat, he beat him, and then there's Bonner. Bonner's just fighting guys, random guys. Um, no, he's not going to win. No one's winning against Stanton in the division. I don't see anyone. I, I'm the so, only one. I'm the only one that can kill yeah. the Zork. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to imagine that that, if, as, if, assuming that you win in Dublin, London, whatever it ends up being, they make the the Stanton and the and Stewart fight for later this year. I, I I would imagine the UFC will be back in London in March. There will probably be a Cage Warrior show that same weekend, so that seems like a, a logical date uh, for that fight if that happens. How much longer do you imagine you'll be in Cage Warriors if everything goes the way that you kind of plan it to? It's so hard to predict because you know with with with, with Cage Warriors, I, I need to obviously win fights. There is that whole contender series which i don't know i don't know when the next one will be but it won't be too long away that's like the ufc's vending machine of just getting in and out fighters it's also the opportunity nowadays to get into the ufc they don't really just sign you up like him is like a last minute replacement or contender series it's very rare they'll sign you up to a straight contract so all i can do is i can just keep have to just keep winning fights look good doing it the better i look doing it the the more i increase my chance and that that's all it comes down to i i, I don't know it could be four fights five fights could be one fight it's really hard to predict i'm on the cusp but that doesn't mean it, you're, you're going it's just it's that's not how it works i, de I definitely think uh already by next year you know we will we, we will sort of be in a position like even even it could be at the end of this year, you never know. But like I said, I think lead, leading into next year, I think the future is very bright for Drago. So I think it's uh, it's, it's it's definitely a very promising, and you know, it's just the annoying thing is obviously not not getting the fights. But if you look at the skill development that Will was making, uh, I think it could pay off in the long run. I think it could pay off. I think it could be one of them things where you know that delayed UFC entry. Could maybe blessing even, in disguise. Could maybe even prepare me more for when I do go to the trenches of what UFC is, because maybe you know just warming up a little bit more outside of cage warriors. Like even though mixed standard was a loss, it's still five rounds. It's still experience in the bank, and you know that's what the judges thought. I don't as as Nate Diaz would say, you know I don't give a fuck about all that judges shit. You know I know what happened in the fight. You know it's it's about it's about you know finishing these motherfuckers and just surviving and not dying and that's what it comes down to you know of course you don't want to get outpointed and dominated in a fight but i don't really feel like mick did that to me i think it was very very close so i can live with it and i know if we do go again i'll have what it takes next time to do the job and i know i know i will with with the belt or without the belt like i say the the destination and you know going towards ufc gold that's what we're going for but essentially as a fighter you don't have a choice you just have to do what the promoter does and tells you and leave whatever the, opportunity the path out and you presents just have to itself fight and win that's all it is and you have to just keep doing that until until you're where you need to be yeah i mean we've seen it so many times you know like even though cage warriors has been the route to the ufc People take such different, you know, paths through it, and to finally get there, um, that absolutely, and we've seen it happen so many times where people do end up being cage warriors for a bit longer, and it pays off because you're not taking, you know, they're they're not trying to just give you wins; they're still trying to test you, even if they think you're UFC ready. They're going to try and, you know, help prepare you even more for the UFC. So I think that that is only a, a benefit for when you do get there. Um, we got the the kind of quite a, a long way out prediction of, of Modi, your fight against Petrino um, from your dad last time out. So it would be, it would be wrong for me to not ask Will uh, on, on your opinions on the matchup with Petrino in Brazil at the start of November. Yeah, he's, he's a good athlete. He's young. 
he's someone who's got an overall well-rounded skill set and he's undefeated. But I don't think he's fought the competition that Mo has fought. I think that he's still a little bit green. And I just think, yeah, you know, Mo with his skill set and his overall game, he's very, very good now. So very polished. And uh, I think he'll put it on this Brazilian. What, Start hurting him. What round are we calling? Could be a round two finish. Sets it up in the first round like with that. the damage. Does him up with the damage and then rounds two finishes it off. I'll take that one. Yeah. Round two finish. Just too much fatigues, fatigues the guy. Mm. I, I feel like uh, this is something we're going to talk about a fair bit closer to the fight because it's something that in one of the first episodes you mentioned and I thought, okay, well, that's definitely a narrative of this fight that we can dive into. But uh, I know that Will will not pull the punches when it comes to this. Do you feel like Petrino, it, it, they're trying to set Petrino up? For... Yeah, of course, because other what? Yeah, why else would they want it in his country? He's the one with the undefeated record. He's the one that has to fly out and fight. We give him an advantage. Yeah, of course, but at the same time, it's also the UFC are just making fights. You know, they just make fights, and this is a fight that they can make, and it makes sense for them. And it, it's up to Mo to just win, win in fashion, and like with anything. They're given, tune, they're given tune, the tune fight. Changed. Look, they're, 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 they're given the fight. So, you know, it's not whether they think what, yeah, one, I believe it's, it's like this. One person has the advantage and yeah, fair enough. But that's okay. Home court advantage, still got to get the job done. At the end of the day, the only thing that will make you defeated even before the fight is uphill. So, you know, realistically, that, that's, that's what frightens people when they, when they walk out there to, a, to an away crowd. It's like, oh my God, they're going to be burnt. If that doesn't phase you, then you really it is actually 50-50 up in the air as to, do you know what I mean? There is no advantage at that point. You know what I mean? It's just, oh, wow, okay, we have to travel and, 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 and that's great. So, I mean, yeah, I guess you could say UFC, UFC traditionally, if they want someone to win in their home country, they, you know, they, they put guys up where they, they, they kind of, you know, it's a favourable matchup for them. But, you know, obviously at the end of the day, it's, like like Will said, it's just matchmaking. They just whatever fits, whatever works. You know, whatever visa situations are are, are easier as well. Um, there's there's a couple of different factors that go into that. But uh, yeah, man, it's up to us. They're giving us the opportunity. It's up to us to go and get the job done. And that's it. And that's what we're gonna go and do. I'm excited for it. Um, I feel like that pretty much wraps it up. I, I'm sure that we will have plenty of time to get stuck into the way more because I, I'm sure we will have you back, Will, a bunch of times whenever there's a fight week coming up or a big middleweight fight, something like that, to, to dive into and get oh, your we, take we, on. We've we, we got more like miscellaneous things that we we, we got to get into as well. Just like, do you know what I mean? Just get into everything, mate. Um, you know, even outside of fighting as well. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We will delve much deeper. <laughs> yeah, Rap it's good to get the... Up. <laughs> it's good to get the the whole kind of picture of you know we've got like where you guys first started training route through cage warriors ufc plans and then going forward we can just dive more into nonsense things that have less 100%. to do with fighting and all that good stuff um so will thank you for your time mate uh and uh and mo i'll see you next week what was that 42 thing because i've forgotten what it was called 40, oh my god, uh, 48, 48 laws, of laws of power. That's 48. It. <laughs> yeah. I will, I'll, re I'll report back on it. Check week. out, it is a very dark book, but you know, in, in a lot of ways, very truthful. <laughs> it's almost too truthful, but anyways, yeah, good stuff. I'm excited. Nice uh, one. sweet, I'll uh, I'll catch you next week. Cheers, nice one, brother. Have an amazing evening, yeah. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, you too. Right, no worries. Care. See you later.